with my box of cuddle body. I decided to do a little bit of investigating. I should have done this before I started this project. I just didn't think to do it. Um, I've just been doing a little bit as I've gone along. And I went online to see how big is this baby supposed to be? What kind of body is it supposed to have? Who made this? Why did they make it? And I am having the hardest time finding information out about this sculpt. So if you have information, please feel free to put it in the comments so other people can get the correct information. Um, there is one of these kits on WorthPoint, and everywhere I'm going, it seems to be telling me that this is a very rare kit and that only, I think, a hundred of them were made. That could be right, that could be wrong. You never know with information you get off the internet, right? But I am on WorthPoint, and it does say that um, Kiki was created by Sharon after being inspired by a picture of a real-life baby gorilla born at a rescue center. Uh, Mother Zazie cradles her newborn baby boy in the Hanover Zoo in Germany. The little gorilla was born on Friday, January 11, 2008. He was the fifth child of Buzandi, a male gorilla. So there's a little um, information. It says limited edition of only 100 worldwide. It's supposed to be a lifelike size baby gorilla sculpt. And um, this article says that its completed size is 22 to 24 inches. I found a site where it says that it's 18 inches. I found a site where it says it's 20 inches. I'm also seeing different versions of this, and that is with three-quarter limb and full limb. So I have no clue. I wouldn't mind just putting this gorilla as a, a cuddle body completely, but since I did the limbs anyway, let's do it. Here is an 18 to 19-inch 19, 19 body, and that feels like a good fit with these limbs. So let's take a look at a 20-inch body. Hopefully I have some in here. This is a 20-inch body. This actually seems, a little, the body seems like it might be the right size. It's a little bit wide and the legs are a little bit big considering this is my limb size. And if I did it from here, let's see right about there. Um, that could work. I just think it's going to be a little puffy. And I really like this pattern because it matches. And, um, and if you didn't want to dress the gorilla, it would look like it's in pajamas all the time. Oh, I'm torn. I, I'm going to look at a larger body since this work point ad says that it's 22 to 24 inches. Here's a 22 inch body. <clears throat> and this is getting up to the size of that body that I showed you before. You know, that's not bad. It's just so big. Um, I don't know. I'm not sure what to do. Oh my goodness. I have to make a call, but I just don't like the, the teddy bear shape of that belly and these legs are rather thick and if you look at the limbs on this they're very very slim. I think I may split the difference here and go with go with the 20 inch body <clears throat> rather than the 18 inch body okay we are back I got a needle and thread and this body and I got online and did a little bit more research and again, some of this sculpt has a much longer limb. And it says in some of the listings that it's three quarter. And this doesn't look like three quarter, but it doesn't look like one quarter. So I'm just gonna have to go with <clears throat> my instincts. So I'm gonna cut where I feel like it needs to be cut. I want the limbs to be a little bit long and lanky. I was looking at pictures of baby gorillas and they do have these kind of long, linky, skinny limbs. But I don't want it to look silly. And you know, I'm gonna need about an inch or half an inch at least to get a nice loop. Let's pop that in there, make sure that it fits just barely, oh my. And that would be the length of the leg. I think that's okay. I might just go 
<clears throat> a teeny bit shorter. Less than, like, less than a quarter of an inch. Make sure they're both the same. So there are my legs. And then what I'm going to do is I have my little mini travel iron. And I use pinking shears. And I'm just ironing down this seam so it's easier to sew. So that will be the legs. And I'll do the same with the arms, even though they tend to have, at least it looked like in pictures, longer arms. So I may not cut the arms as short. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the needle and thread and I'm going to um, sew around here and leave a little space here for the uh, zip tie to go through. I just want to make sure once this is done that this will fit inside. That will fit nice and snug. Let's try the hand again one more time. And that looks like that's going to fit okay. Just barely. I mean, just barely. But that I'm, I'm finished. Like magic. So all I did was so I went around a couple of times just to make sure that it was strong. Made a little loop, a simple loop for the um, zip tie to go through. Okay, so now I'm gonna fill the limbs up with glass. Now, there is no plug that is that tiny, obviously. This doesn't take a lot of glass. So what I'm using are these. These are the little um, felt squares you put at the bottom of furniture so they don't scratch your wood floor. And I got them at like, I don't know, Home Depot. I don't mean to plug big chain stores. They don't need me to do that. But I got them at Home Depot and I got like a bargain bag. It was a huge bag. And the adhesive is really good and this is really soft. And it makes a great plug. And they come in all different sizes. You can get a bag of assorted sizes. I just have the little tiny ones because I only use them when I have a hole that's too small for a plug. And so I'm just going to fill up these limbs, and then I'll be right back. So now it's time to get the arms and the legs stuffed with poly. Now, um, this cuddle body before, remember, it had that little mitten on the bottom, so the only way to stuff it would be through a little gap left here. I forgot that that gap is here, so I'm going to have to sew that up on all four of the limbs before I start stuffing the baby. So I'm going to do that super quick. Okay, I got them all sewn up. That was a lot of fun. Actually, it's just tedious, but it's a little satisfying. I'm gonna stuff some poly. I don't want these to look like big, giant, fluffy teddy bear arms, but I don't want them to look sloppy. So I'm not gonna do them very firm, but just enough. I did one here, and I'm glad I chose to go a little longer with the arm. It just feels right to me. And then I'm gonna just pop this arm in there and it's a little bit snug. And the drag is that you're not gonna get a lot of turning action here, but you wouldn't anyway. I mean, our arms don't turn a whole heck of a lot there. And I'm gonna get this zip tie in there. You want um, the zip tie to be inside of the flange there. And I will snip this off and try to hide that little tail of the zip tie in the fabric so nobody has to look at that. Oh, look at how cute. Okay, let's do those legs. Okay, now we're gonna get to this body and I'm just gonna push some fluff down there. Um, I fluffed here and then there's glass in here but they're not super heavy. So the head will be heavy and the body will be heavy. Um, so I'm gonna fill up a stocking. I wanna make this stocking as full as I can. Unfortunately, this isn't a very thick stocking. And to me, it feels like some of the glass escapes out of it. And so I'm gonna double up that stocking because I don't want glass coming out. I think that's great, but you can see some of the glass. It's really fine, so it's kind of leaking out. So I'm gonna give it another stocking the other way. 
probably don't have to, but I'm going. And it might be too much. I don't know. We'll see. It feels right to me. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Head is finally dry. Yay. So I'm going to get it going here. I did put tape behind my magnet. Um, when I'm putting that stocking in, I kind of poke the glass in and stuff. And I didn't want the magnets to become dislodged because they were a little bit difficult to put in. And I'm going to put a stocking down in there. I don't need the whole thing. So I'll cut some off and save that for another day. Let me grab a paintbrush and feed it down there. I like to stuff the stocking towards the back of the head. It weights the back of the head a little bit. I made a big pot of lentils. I know that sounds gross, and I used to have a friend who loved lentils. It was one of her favorite dinners she'd make for her family, and I'm like, ugh, really? That really sounds disgusting. Um, I just didn't grow up on lentils, and to me it just kind of seemed like split pea soup. I mean, not my favorite thing in the world. But I got a couple of really good lentil recipes, and I gave it a try after my oldest daughter made them for us um, at her house for dinner one night. I was, what is this? And she said, oh, it's red lentils. And I said, get out of town. That is really, really good. And I said, was it hard to make? And she said, oh, gosh, it was the easiest thing ever. So I make a big pot of lentils, and it'll last us a couple days. And every time I make it, I think, oh, I made too much. This is going to end up in the garbage. Nobody's going to eat this. And every single time, they just disappear. We use them as a side dish or, you know, it's nice to have like a bowl of soup. Or um, it's nice to warm it up and have it with pita chips. It's really delicious, actually. And it's full of fiber. And it has protein. It's a really good, yummy thing to do. And I make mine with garlic and onion and celery and carrots and fresh tomatoes and um, stewed tomatoes and chicken stock, salt and pepper, lots of herbs from the garden. At the end, I throw in a bunch of green beans or whatever vegetable I have <clears throat> and let it simmer. It doesn't take very long at all. It's like one cup of dry lentils for three cups of liquid. It makes a pretty decent sized pot of lentils. And it's really yummy. If you've never tried them, you have to try them. Let me get myself ready here. Oops. I want that tight so the head doesn't come off, but I don't want it so tight that um, it won't turn freely. There we go.